All right. Hallelujah. What a beautiful morning. And you're all looking so bright and so beautiful. Can you give yourself some, you know, encourage yourselves. Thank you for coming to church. Um, <clears throat> our theme for this month is, Lord, I receive your help. <clears throat> I can see. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. <clears throat> Every... Uh, okay. <clears throat> name. Father, we need you. Father, we cannot do without you. Father, we are nothing without you. Father, we confess our inadequacies. We confess our insufficiencies, Lord. We need you every day, every hour, every time, Lord, because we can do nothing without you. Father, we bow 
bow before you. We bless you. We worship you. We submit ourselves to your leadership. We submit ourselves to the throne of grace, Lord. Bless us, Lord, and may your name be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. We may have our seats. Um, I bring you greetings. Thank you very much, choir. God bless you. Thank you for uh, everyone who has uh, helped this morning. May God bless us in Jesus' name. So I want to thank the pastors. God bless you, sirs, and everybody. God bless you, Ma. God bless you, senior pastors. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, I also, just kind of preambles, also bring you greetings from my family, from my wife. She's not in the country at the moment for personal and also for family reasons. So just keep on your prayer. We're in touch with her every day. Thank God for technology and videos and all that. So she also sends her greetings. Hallelujah. Just keep her in your prayers. Praise the Lord. Um, today, I'll just briefly, uh, we're going to pray and um, we're going to be praying and saying every locked gates, you know, when I was kind of preparing for the past week or so, um, I, I just had a burden in my spirit that, you know, we should pray for locked gates. And I say, ah, but these guys, these people are in Canada. I mean, how can there be locked gates? You know, they already, they've arrived, you know, they've arrived, you know. But the Lord said, no. Locked gates, locked gates. Are you praying for something? Maybe it's your career. Maybe you're actually thinking ahead in your life and saying, you know, is this what I'm going to do? For the next how many years, this nine to five job, I can barely save money for, for a rainy day, let alone, you know, retire, uh, uh, let alone retire early uh, uh, and become, you know, everybody wants to, wants to have some security. Uh, and I tell you, everybody wants to be a millionaire. Uh, and then also spiritually, you're saying this nine to five job, this 24 hour, for, in my case, this 24 hour job, it's kind of, it's almost as if it's driving a wedge. And at a point, you, you just discover that, you know, the Lord just has to help me. And so we're going to be praying towards the end. We're going to say God. And then some people are also experiencing spiritual, you know, attacks. Some people are experiencing things that they cannot explain, you know, and they just want to break through and they cannot break through. The Bible says that the children of Israel got to the edge of Canaan. They go to the edge of Canaan. They had even sent spies to cross the river and go and look at the land. And they say, wow, this place is flowing with milk and honey. The fruits are so gigantic. But because of some evil reports, the Bible says at the edge of Canaan, the Lord says, turn back and face Egypt. Ah, they turned back and faced Egypt. They thought it was a joke. They said, we'll go, we'll go. Moses said, don't go, don't go. They said, we'll cross, we are sorry. They killed many of them. So they came back. The Lord said, no, I didn't say. I said, turn back and face Egypt. Okay, oh yeah, begin to go back. Begin to. It shall not be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Some people come to the edge of breakthrough. And just that final, that final breakthrough. It's just so difficult. It's just that final push. For, you know, I hadn't really experienced a lot of locks until, I think, 2017. I was sharing either with the choir during their night vigil or maybe with uh, the pastors or something. Uh, until, I think, 2017, just shortly after my ordination, I kind of began to get a lot of, you know, breakthroughs. I was running. So this is an opportunity to encourage people. You may be running and God is calling you and you're running and God is calling you. You know, this is an opportunity to encourage you. And I was running away from, you know, from God, from, from, from you know, coming up, you know. And the Lord said, no. And then finally things began to happen and, and, and there was no breakthrough. And suddenly things locked until God showed up. I will share that testimony at a much later time. But I want to encourage you and say that, is there any luck? Is there any luck? 
The Lord wants to break every rock, lock in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord wants to break every lock in the mighty name of Jesus. But before we say some prayers, we just want to encourage ourselves and look at the Bible. And uh, our mini uh, subtopic says activating divine help. Activating divine help. Sorry I didn't send the presentation, the slides. But uh, our subtopic says activating divine help. And, you know... I, I heard of a story from a man of God, from a man, a man of God, and uh, it was a personal story, and I would call it how not to activate, you know, divine help, how not to activate divine help. Before we just read a few scriptures and pray, how not to activate divine help. And so this man, he was telling us, he was encouraging us, he said he was already a Christian, he was a worker in the church, but before he became a Christian, he said there was one Baba that his mother took him to when he became a man, you know, after graduation and all that. So, after he became born again, after he became a Christian, he said he doesn't know what happened. And he was a worker in the church. But something in him would say, I ah, just appreciate Baba. And Baba likes a black she-goat. Baba likes black she-goat, you know, and do some incantations and cause some spirits, you know. Uh, and so he said every year, whenever he goes back to the village, he will, something will just say, okay, just appreciate Baba. He will justify himself. Say, after all, God said we should appreciate our elders. So he will take a black she-goat and he will go to Baba's shrine. He said, Baba, initially he said, we'll be saying, Baba, do those things again for me. Do, do. At the time, he said, when he became more serious with God, he said, no, I will continue to give Baba a black sheep. And then, but he would justify himself. He said, I will just say, Baba, pray for me. Say, I will justify myself. I will say, Baba, pray for me. So he said, we take the black sheep again and go and give Baba. He said, Baba, pray for me. We say, okay. He said, one day, scales fell, fell out of his side. He entered into big trouble. He's a big man in, you know, in the banks and in, in his company. And he ran into big trouble that involved EFCC, involved a lot of things. His life, his family, everything was at stake. He was, you know, you think he signed something for somebody, circumvented some rules, gave the person hundreds of millions of loan. In those days when money was money and the person disappeared. Ah, say the banks. He said, now was the time for God to show him who, whose help have you been seeking. So you see, he ran back to God, and the heavens were locked. See, God turned his back on him. But what shocked him was that something said, ah, what of Baba, what of Baba, what of Baba, what of Baba. So he ran to the village with a black she-goat. He said, Baba said, I will not, I cannot help you. I will not take anything from you. Take it and go. You think I don't know you. The gods are angry with you. You've been fighting us. You think I don't know. Baba changed completely. He said, is there, uh, you take your shigo. He said, you will suffer. He said, this will happen to you. He said, the gods are after you. He said, you, do, you think we don't know what you have been doing. Baba said, I cannot help you. I was told you are coming. And I was told to tell you that we cannot help you. So God turned his back. And Baba turned his back. He said, that's when he knew. In, initially, he didn't know he was in trouble. He said, that's when he realized, ah, I am in trouble. He said, this time now, when scales fell out of his eyes, he said, he was no longer praying for the case. He was just asking God for forgiveness. He now realized, I've been living a double life. I've been asking help from God, but I've been also pleasing Satan, appeasing Satan. You see, he spent 21 days fasting and praying, just dry, just, you see, he went somewhere, he was just crying. You see, he wasn't praying for the case anymore. He said, God, have mercy on my soul. I have sinned against you. Ah, there's no time, but the way the case ended, you will see that God suddenly, the heaven suddenly opened. And God himself came down, arrested the man wherever he was. You will seek, you will know how to activate divine mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. You will know how to activate divine help. Quickly, let's look at 2 Samuel chapter 5. 
Remember, we are going to pray, but let's just quickly encourage ourselves. Second Samuel chapter 5, verse 17. Can we have it? Second Samuel chapter 5, verse 17. But when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, ah, all the Philistines came up to see David. And David heard of it and went to the hold. The Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. When they heard they had anointed you king, they said, ah, they have anointed this one king. Ah, this one has escaped to Canada. Ah, this one thinks he has escaped. You see, the Philistines gathered together and they went into the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I go up to the Philistines without deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said unto David, go, I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thy hand. And David came to Baal Perazim, and David smote them and said, the Lord has given me breakthrough. Ah, the Lord has broken forth upon my enemies. Look at verse 22. That is actually what surprised me. And the Philistines came up yet again and spread themselves again in the same valley of Rephaim. The devil does not get tired. Because you defeated him once, you go and relax. Ah, that's not how to activate divine help. Let's look at what David did. You know, because the Lord said the first time, David, go, I will deliver them into your hands. You will kill them, you will conquer, you will prosper. And David went back again the second time and inquired of the Lord. Ah, if you look at the Bible, the king with the greatest you know, amount of, and he inquired of the Lord, and he inquired of the Lord, and he inquired, it's David. What is your inquiry? Who is your inquiry? Who do you run to every day and hold on to and look up to and say, help me every day? The fact that David had strong men, the fact that he had a strong army, the fact that he defeated them the first time, when they came the second time, it did not stop him from going back again. And now look at another shock. Ah, verse 23. When David inquired of the Lord, the Lord said, don't go. Can you imagine if he had said, because the Lord said the first time, go. What's the need of inquiring of the Lord? Offering me this job. After all, he was one that brought me out. He's this Calgary I'm about to go to. It must be the Lord. He went back a second time. How to activate divine help is to submit yourself to the presence of the Lord. Submit yourself to the inquiry of the Lord. And don't look up to other hills. Don't look up to one Baba that is always requesting a black she goat. Just submit yourself to God and inquire. And then the Lord will know this one is my own. I can't disappoint him. I can't disappoint her. She's always coming back to cry and say, God, what do I do in this situation? He's always coming back to say, God, in this situation, what do I do? Look at what the Lord says. The Lord said, don't go, David. He says, thou shalt not go. Go behind them. There is a mulberry tree there. Wait for me at the mulberry tree. Against the mulberry tree. Verse 24. It shall be when you hear the sounds as if there is a troop of army marching on top of the mulberry tree. Then you shall know that the Lord has gone before you. Then you shall arise and go. Ah! How to activate divine? He said, David, don't go this time around. Don't worry. I'm going to teach these people a lesson myself. 
You see, the first time I just empowered you and you went and defeated them and then they are coming a second time. Don't worry. Because you have come back to me a second time to ask me again for my help a second time. Ah, don't worry. He said, wait for me under the mulberry tree. You and your soldiers. Then when you hear a noise on top of the mulberry tree, like a marching soldier, like armies, like troops, then you know that the heavenly host of angels is going ahead of you. Then arise. Because when you go, you will no longer be the one fighting the battle. It will be the God of heaven fighting the battle. Ah, and that's exactly what happened. David went, he went and waited under the mulberry tree, and then he waited to hear what God was going to say. And sure enough, suddenly he told the soldiers, don't worry, let's just wait here. They must have been wondering, what are we waiting for? This man is going crazy. Does he have another army that is coming to help us? But he had inquired of the Lord. How do you activate divine help? Look at Psalms chapter 23 verse 6. We all know that place. Psalms chapter 23 verse 6. I'll show you something here. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I was reading a Bible commentary, and it says, Because I dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever, because I'm dwelling in the presence of God, because I'm inquiring from God, surely the angel of goodness and the angel of mercy shall follow me. Ah, he said, because I am somebody who likes to dwell in the house of the Lord, because I'm somebody who likes to dwell in the presence of the Lord, how do you activate divine health? He said, because of that, surely, goodness, and they have no choice. He said, because I spend enough time in his presence. Look at Psalms chapter 27. Praise the Lord. We're around to know we're going to pray very soon. Hallelujah. You see, one thing have I desired, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and that I might inquire daily in his holy temple. Sorry, verse 4. You see, that is just all I desire. And I will seek after it, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, so that I can continue to inquire. Remember I told you, there is no king recorded that has the higher, any amount of inquire from the Lord, inquire from the Lord, inquire from the Lord than David. You see, that's all I do. I just dwell in the presence of the Lord, so that I can continue to inquire in his holy temple. I want us to rise up on our feet and then we'll begin to pray. I will read, you know, Psalms chapter 24, verse 7. And I'll read Psalms chapter. We'll pray with that scripture. Psalms 24, verse 7. Can we pray on our feet? Psalms chapter 24, verse 7. Ah, you see, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, that the king of glory might come in. Ah, is there anything you have been praying to God for? Ah, say, God, today I am activating divine help because I'm located in your presence. Ah, I want you to open your mouth and say, every locked gate... Every locked gate against my life, against my destiny, against my career, against my business, against my finances. Somebody said, before the middle of the month, I don't know what happens to my salary. I don't know. I will budget and budget and budget. You see, how am I going to survive? How am I going to save? How am I going to get to old age? How am I going to recover? Is this the job? You see, I've been looking for the right type of job that befits my studies, my career. He said, I'm just trying to survive. 
Somebody said, it looks as if there's a locked gate. Somebody said, it looks as if there are chains that will not be broken. Ah, I want you to activate divine help. I want you to pray this morning and say, God, Father, every locked gate, the Bible says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, so that the king of glory can break through. Ah, Jesus was in the grave. Ah, but the grave could not hold him. I want you to pray and say, God, every power that has decided that, ah, I will never make it in life. Every power that is still coming after me and say, oh, you must come back. Oh, you must fail. Father, I come against every power. Father, I seek for your help today. I cannot do it on my own, oh Lord. Father, I cannot do it on my own. And David inquired of the Lord the second time. And the Lord said, don't worry. This time around, I will send troops from heaven to go before you. What is your inquiry? Are you talking to God? Have you been crying? Are you keeping some alternatives somewhere? And sending money to some alternatives? Ah, the Lord says she warn you. The Lord says she warn you. The alternatives are just laughing at you. The Lord said that she warn you. We have no other person but God. Ah, I want you to pray. I want you to cry. I say, Lord, help me. Every chains, Lord, by the reason of the anointing, Father, by the reason of the word that you have spoken to us, Lord, by the reason of the assurances you have given to us, Father, I break every chains in the mighty name of Jesus. I break every chains in the mighty name of Jesus. According to your word, Lord, from today onwards, Lord, let there be clear miracles. Let there be clear differences in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be a break of chains, Lord. According to your word, Lord. Father, I have fulfilled your word. Father, King of glory, fulfill your word. In the mighty name of Jesus. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron asunder. He has broken the gates of brass.